Manoj, working at Mary's Manoj. Manoj, our other faculty members of IKS, my dear students, very good morning and my best wishes and greetings from Indian Bank of the Commission. Uh, first of all, let me uh, congratulate and uh, appreciate the efforts of uh, entire ITS family management and ITS innovation cell, uh, you know, for organizing this uh, impact lecture. So it's a thoughtful one and uh, really, uh, I'm sure really it is going to change, uh, it's going to impact in your career, I'm sure. Because uh, this startup or uh, innovation, is coming up in a big way. So again, uh, my appreciation and uh, congratulations to the entire team of ITS uh, for, being, for arranging this series of uh, impact lecture. Another one is like patent related uh, uh, impact lecture. Uh, that is also very, very important for all of you. So, well, uh, uh, once again, I am thankful to the ITS again for inviting me, for choosing me, uh, being a part of this uh, innovation journey as an impactful lecture. What I am going to discuss with you today, there are two things uh, I would like to convey that uh, how the pharmacovigilance sector as well as material vigilance sector provides career opportunity for all of us, the scope and the advantages of these two sectors in the current scenario. When I say career, employment opportunities, that is one thing little bit will be discussing. Similarly, equally, yeah. these two sectors like farm provisions and material vigilance provides or uh, we have lots of potential to become an entrepreneur in these uh, two areas such as farm vigilance and material vigilance. I am sure you all will be knowing the concept of uh, entrepreneurship, right? Clear, no? Entrepreneur. What do you mean by entrepreneurship? Somebody, I think the boy is sleeping actually. Yes. Did he sleep? Come friend please. You can come here. We have lots of places. So, are you aware of the entrepreneurship, right? Anyone wanting to entrepreneurship? Come on, anyone. आपको आपको क्या समझ में आ रहा है? Entrepreneurship का मतलब क्या होता है? जो concept देख रहे हो ना आज का जो discussion है impactful lecture in the series of innovation और entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship का meaning क्या है? Without knowing the entrepreneurship or uh, these things, we cannot move further. Anybody please? Aapko pata hai? Kya? Entrepreneurship ka kya ho? Meaning hai? Yeah, respected your chairman, uh, Ch Chattaji, he is the entrepreneur, right? Yes. Very good. The entrepreneurship means, if we are going to start something, you have your own business, own organization. That is called entrepreneurship. So I mean to say that the pharmacovigilance or material vigilance is going to provide lots of opportunity for you to start your own entrepreneurship or innovation, your own sector, own idea. So entrepreneurship is my own company, own organization. So this is what I am going to discuss. Similarly, since you all are because everybody cannot become an entrepreneur, it is also practically may not be possible. Somebody should, you know, work also, employ also. So, I will also discuss about something, some scope or career avenues related to this uh, two areas so that it will be benefited or balanced. You know, one set of group may be interested for entrepreneurship because other group of, you know, you may not be interested to become an entrepreneur, you want to become a job. So that is, that is also possible in these two sectors. So, what I am going to discuss with you, the pharmacovigilance or material vigilance, it is 
purely on my own experiences. I am going to share with you some of the thoughts. And this is about Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. Before moving on to uh, you know, pharmacovigilance or material vigilance, where you can get your entrepreneurship, I will be talking a little bit about the IPC role. I, I don't, I'm sure many of you might be visited Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, right? Students, how many of you visited IPC last year? What? No. I think because they are not. Uh, okay, okay, sorry. I think your seniors, PG, uh, PhD scholars, they have visited, they have been interacting with us for in many areas related to pharmacovigilance and material vigilance. But for the benefit of all of you, you must understand what is Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission because it's an organization responsible for many activities, many sectors in the uh, pharmaceutical as well as medical uh, devices. We are responsible for developing the standards, monograph. That is called Indian Pharmacopoeia. Uh, we are also committed for uh, promoting the safety of drugs and pharmaceuticals and medical devices through the scheme known as Pharmacovigilance and Medical Vigilance. Uh, we also publish a, a book called National Pharmacopoeia of India for the pharmacists, nurses, doctors, and other healthcare prof uh, professionals uh, to ensure the rational use of medicines. So these are the main activities which is taken by Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. Whereas other areas like if you look at uh, you know the whole umbrella, whole uh, scenario of medicines quality and safety, affordability, everything managed by the regulator that is CDSO, Central Drug Standard Control Organization or even State Drug Control Organization. But IPC provides significant contribution in these three areas, quality, safety and rational use. So this is about brief profile about the Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. And another advantage, see since you want to become an entrepreneur or owner, there should be some government level commitment. Government policy should be there, then only it is easy for us to start any entrepreneurship or ownership. Say for example, if you are manufacturing a medicine, nobody is there to purchase, then what will happen? It cannot flourish, the entrepreneurship cannot run. <coughs> Similarly, we are, we are producing very good quality food, but nobody is there to eat or nobody is there to pay. It is going to waste. Simple logic. In the same way, there should be some kind of regulation or rule. And here, to become an entrepreneurship or to start your career in medical device. I am sure the pharmaceutical related career, pharmaceutical related job opportunities will be very well taken care by your respected teachers because I know their competency. I am working with them since last 10 years. So certainly they will be telling you about the job opportunities or career for you in pharmaceutical sector, no doubt. But this is another area where pharmacists also can enter medical device, right? We have a rule now. This is basic base for everyone if you want to, if you are an aspirant to become an entrepreneur or if you are an aspirant to get some job, government job or very good job in the medical device sector, we have a regulation now. That is called Medical Devices Rule 2017. Only very few countries across the globe, they have medical device rules, separate rule uh, known as medical devices. Like Drugs and Cosmetics Act, I, I am sure you all are aware of Drugs and Cosmetics Act, right? Guys, you are aware or not? How many of you are aware of Drugs and Cosmetics Act? Can you raise your hands please? Sorry, the other third year or? First year. They are the first year. Yeah. Oh. Second year, second year. Then it is no advantage for them. I think I don't know how many of them will understand. Uh, anyway, uh, in the next uh, coming years, maybe second year or third year, uh, you will be studying uh, the subject known as forensic or uh, jurisprudence. Uh, there you are going to study about the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, which is essential for you how you are going to manufacture a pharmaceutical products or how you are going to 
export a pharmaceutical product or import or sale distribution so all uh, all of these components will be discussed in your drugs and cosmetics act i'm sure you will be studying but today other than the uh, pharmaceuticals we have medical device rule also now i don't think you will be studying in your curriculum because in your curriculum the medical device is not there as of now the rule is not there but it is a very good information for you you can also enter into the medical device there are a lot of scope and this rule is being introduced in our country recently that is 2017 uh, where all medical devices are being manufactured sold distributed will be covered under the medical device rule when i say medical device i will tell you some of the examples that i will tell you in the next slide and this is about the rule medical devices rule we have different category of medical devices like class a b c and d class a means some of example i tell you next slide but here there are two authorities are involved to regulate the medical device again this things will be studying in your forensic pharmacy like SLA that means uh, state licensing authority in India country like India we have a federal uh, system or federal structure do you understand that term federal federalism federalism kya hota hai federal government bolte hai na federal government ka meaning kya hai centralized government ek to china for example china uk वहां पे फेडरल गवर्नमेंट है या नहीं रूल इज एनफोर्स ओनली बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वन वन सेंट पावर इज ओनली वन पॉइंट बट फेडरल का मतलब द पावर इज इंप्लीमेंटेड बाय बोथ सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट हियर इन केस ऑफ मेडिकल डिवाइस आल्सो इफ एनी मेडिकल डिवाइस वांट्स टू बी मैन्युफैक्चर्ड यू एज एन एंटरप्रेन्योर से फॉर एग्जांपल टुमारो यू आर गोइंग टू बी एन एंटरप्रेन्योर यू आर गोइंग टू हैव योर ओन कंपनी right you want to start manufacturing of some medical device say for example cardiac stent someone wants to manufacture a cardiac stent so how you are going to proceed how you are going to get the license for this cardiac stent then the rules are rule says the license should be obtained from the central licensing authority that is cla and the state licensing authority they have some device they have some uh, class of device will be approved by the state licensing authority so this is according to the rule the sale manufacturing distribution of all such devices are distributed by both central licensing authority and state licensing authority when i say state here we are in uttar pradesh so we have Uttar Pradesh State Drug Controller also will be responsible for sale and distribution of all medical devices, whereas permission is obtained from the Central Licensing Authority. So this is how the regulation will work. And if being an entrepreneur, someone wants to become an entrepreneur, we must understand. We should know how this rule is being implemented. Accordingly, we can work. So this is some of the example. Drugs you know very well, right? you have different class of drugs different category of drugs injection dosage form different pharmaceutical dosage form vaccine etc etc but when it comes to the device how it is being categorized you may ask me what is medical device drugs to jante hain medical device ke bare mein nahi jante but iske bare mein bhi aapko thoda sa jankari hona chahiye ye kya hai medical device samajh mein aa raha hai medical device ke bare mein kuch idea hai aapko aap logon ko anybody device kya hota hai ye device hai koi bhi device use ho raha hai aapke diagnosis mein disease diagnose karne ke liye aapko device hona chahiye wo medical device bolte hain jaise thermometer temperature monitor karne ke liye temperature thermometer use karte hain wo medical device approve hota hai aajkal pehle ye nahi tha हमने डिस्कस किया था ना मेडिकल डिवाइस रूल कौन से ईयर में हुआ है लागू हुआ है वेरी गुड 2017 मेडिकल डिवाइस रूल इंप्लीमेंट हुआ है उससे पहले ये कुछ नहीं था एनीबॉडी कैन मैन्युफैक्चर एनीथिंग बट नाउ आफ्टर दिस रूल 
even if you want to manufacture a thermometer or glucose strip, you require permission from the regulator. Glucose strip manufacture करते हैं ना वो innovator हो जाएंगे, entrepreneur हो जाएंगे. You as an entrepreneur, you can manufacture ना glucose strips also. But you require permission from the various authority bodies. So these are the example of some device according to the system. I mean, risk-based classification. Low risk to high risk. और बहुत सारे devices हैं. Risk, low risk to high risk. आपका जितना भी device हो रहा है, cardiology में, neurology में, pediatrics में, gynecology में, all devices are approved and regulated now. ये regulation का मीनिंग है. रेगुलेशन का मतलब होता है यू रिक्वायर सम काइंड ऑफ परमिशन टू मैन्युफैक्चर इफ यू वांट टू मैन्युफैक्चर सच डिवाइस द क्वालिटी शुड बी मेंटेन सेफ्टी शुड बी मेंटेन एफिकेसी शुड बी मेंटेन दैट इज हाउ द सिस्टम वर्क्स देखिए ये रेगुलेशन के बाद दिस इज अबाउट एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप पहले इंडिया में लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ बहुत कम मैन्युफैक्चरर्स थे वो जो मैन्युफैक्चर करते थे क्लास ए डिवाइस क्लास बी डिवाइस क्लास सी डिवाइस और क्लास डी डिवाइस ये आफ्टर जो है रेगुलेशन आने के बाद टोटल रजिस्टर्ड मार्केटिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन होल्डर्स इन द एमएएस मींस मार्केट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन होल्डर्स ये टेक्निकल टर्म है इन द एरिया ऑफ मेडिकल डिवाइस देखिए फोर्टी प्लस 734 medical devices, manufacturers or entrepreneurship or registered in our country. उसमें से देखोगे, MD बहुत है medical device, medical device alone 14,000 plus. IVD जो है in vitro diagnostics, in vitro diagnostics का मतलब जो diagnostic kit होता है ना, TB diagnosis करना है आपको. Covid में कितना diagnostic kits use हुआ है? Diagnostic kits. Used to diagnose the disease, namely TB, HIV, dengue, hepatitis, malaria. We require some kit now. Without kit, you cannot diagnose. In vitro diagnostic kits are required to do so. And IVD is also a medical device now. If any entrepreneur, suppose tomorrow you may be interested to manufacture IVD kits, you require permission under the medical device rule. You can see. 16,000 plus uh, IVD manufacturers are registered. Other than this, you can see the importer, both medical device and IVD. Right? Class wise, many A, B, D, other class wise uh, manufacturers in India. Class A, B, C, D, you have a different type of risk based classification of medical device. Class A, B, C, D. D means high end of equipments. Or all implants, cardiac stents, orthopedic implants, all such implants are class D device. Now you can see, before 2017, all the cardiac stents, suppose cardiac stents to be placed, all such cardiac stents were imported. No India specific manufacturers were there. But you can see now, around 700 plus Indian, India based manufacturers or our own companies have come up and they started manufacturing implants, cardiac stents. So this is the slide actually, this slide I have taken from the Central Licensing Authority that is CDSU. How the sector or the entrepreneurship is growing in our country. Similarly you can see the import also. Importers are also coming up. You know, uh, subsequent to this, uh, you know, medical device. I think this is easy for you, everybody can understand. So far it may be a complicated or difficult for you to understand. But you can understand, this is the uh, recent one I have taken from the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Uh, regarding the export and import dependency of India. You can see from 20, 2011 to 2012, what is the import and export. The dark one is import and the light blue color is export one. You can see here wise how the import is increasing actually and the export is almost same level. This is uh, till 2016. Right? 
Then after 17, the rule was introduced. I mean, the Make in India concept also came. Now you can see the uh, import potential of, I mean, export potential of uh, uh, medical devices from India. Past five years, you can see the growth. Actually, the rule was introduced. We have a regulation. The Make in India also introduced. Startup, entrepreneurship, all your innovation, sales, everything that came into existence. And you can see now the export from India is increasing year to year. That is the current uh, one. 2022 year, uh, you can see 29, 23 uh, USD billion, million, sorry, million uh, potential of medical devices are being exported from India to various countries. Now this is for an idea, which kind of device is imported from India, right? Consumable and disposable like gloves, mask, surgical cotton, suture, ligation, all such things are consumable and disposable. Surgical instruments is another one you can see for the exports for the financial year 2021 and then financial year 2022 and what is the percentage of share was increased with the subsequent years. And this is about uh, import and export of medical devices over the past two financial years, particularly for the year 2021 and 2022. Now where we are exporting? Because the credit goes to all the entrepreneurs like you, young entrepreneurs making India concept, etc. So these are the countries actually we are uh, exporting. UAE, USA, China and even Germany we are exporting actually. Earlier we used to import from them but we are now exporting our uh, medical devices. These are the data available with the Ministry of uh, Commerce. So these all are about the current potential for you to become an entrepreneur or uh, uh, ownership in uh, these two areas like pharmacovigilance and material business. Now let me tell you what is by uh, pharmacovigilance. So briefly, roughly, layman language, any idea, any, I, I don't think pharmacovigilance has studied. So you will be studying in the years to come, but pharmacovigilance provides a lot of uh, career opportunity as well as entrepreneurship opportunity for you. When, I, when we talk about the term pharmacovigilance, it is nothing but to monitor the safety of medicines. Whether it is safe or not, you have to see in your patients. No medicine is free from adverse effect. There may be some adverse effect. Right? That adverse effect needs to be monitored and you have to see whether the medicine is having benefit more or risk ratio is more. If risk of the medicine is more, then some, of, some kind of intervention is required. This is how the pharmacovigilance. Now, what is the role? How you can become an entrepreneur in pharmacovigilance? Because now we have around 30, 40, 30,000 pharmaceutical companies here roughly in our country. 30 or 30,000 or even 40,000 also. I don't exactly maybe the number may be more. Now every company, pharmaceutical company, should have a system of pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance means what? Any idea? Just I told you, no? what do you mean pharmacovigilance? Adverse effect monitoring, very good. Now this all the registered companies, it is mandatory for them, it is must for them to do the pharmacovigilance for their own product. Say for example, tomorrow you may be manufacturing XYZ medicines and you are responsible for all of your product whether doing sales in your patients or not. This company is responsible. But now the problem is, every company, every industry may not have their own system of pharmacovigilance. They may not invest. What they do, they outsource the data, adverse event data. Say for example, your product is doing marketed all over India, even abroad also, your medicine. But you can't, you don't have the own facility to look at the adverse events entire globe. So what do you do? But you have to submit the data to the authority. 
as well as even data. As per the regulation, as per the rule, it is mandatory for us to submit the data as well as even data. But I cannot spend money, I can spend but I don't have time to establish a Pharmaco Vigilance system within my company. So what I should do? Any idea? See, for example, simple logic. You, we don't have a infrastructure or money to construct our own house. What do you do? Rent. You will be hiring a house for rent or lease. Similarly, you are manufacturing a medicine, but doing pharmacovigilance is mandatory, but you can't do it. You are unable to do it. What you will do? But you have to submit the data to authority. You are, you, are you getting my point what I am trying to say? Yes or no? No. Any doubt you can ask me. What I am trying to say, you are manufacturing a medicine, three or four products you are manufacturing. And you are marketed. Your medicine is marketed across India. You have to submit the adverse event data of your medicine to the authority. Adverse events monitoring among the patients, other population and you need to submit the data to authority. But that kind of facility you don't, you don't have to collect the adverse events means you require a software, you require train manpower, you require a place, license, everything you require. But you, you don't have that much facility. So what you will do? Outsourcing. Outsourcing. Somebody say, for example, that is how the pharmacovigilance entrepreneurship ships is coming now. There are so many outsourcing agencies are there, CRO, contract research organization. The CROs will collect the adverse events on behalf of you. Say, for example, my product, I am manufacturing paracetamol. My product is being marketed all over India, but the adverse events of my product, paracetamol, among Indian population will be collected by somebody on behalf of me. I will pay for that. That is called CRO. So there is lots of entrepreneurship that is coming now to do the pharmaco vigilance. So this is one of the opportunity for all of you. Similarly, the companies are also, some of the big companies, they have their own pharmaco vigilance system. They don't want to outsource it, but they have established their own system of pharmaco vigilance, like adverse events collecting, mechanism, database for analysis. So there also you will get a job as a pharmacovigilance officer or pharmacovigilance associate, you know, pharmacovigilance executive, etc. etc. So this is the area it provides currently a lot of career job opportunities as well as entrepreneurship for pharmacists. Are you clear my point? If anybody is having any doubt, please ask me. I don't know whether because I am not aware that uh, you all are first year and second year, otherwise I would have still uh, come down of my level of my presentation. Anyway, if you are understood well and good, otherwise also no problem. Similarly, material vigilance for medical devices, the same structure, same system is applied for medical devices. Now you have seen the medical device, list of medical devices. Those devices are being regulated in India. And again for the medical devices also, you need to collect the safety data, adverse events data and you have to submit to the regulatory authority who is the authority who approves your medicine that is called regulatory authority. And this is another area for you to grow yourself. You have seen the potential of medical devices import, export and manufacturing etc. in our country. Similarly, uh, this sector also provides Career, equal career opportunity for you as well as entrepreneurship. And I don't think um, uh, you will understand this kind of information because it's a highly uh, uh, technical and advanced level of information. How a company should submit their adverse events, that is what I thought of trying to tell you because uh, maybe they may have their own system or they may outsource. This is what I want to try to tell you. Say for example, uh, one of the pharmaceutical companies, say for example, it's Medica X. Either they can submit the report directly, if they have a system, their own system, they can submit the data directly to the authority. If they are unable to do it, then they can go for outsourcing by a third party 
for post marketing service that is PMS data. Then third party sends to the authorities. If it is India, they will send it to Indian regulator. If it is USRPA, they will send it to USRPA. So here, as an entrepreneur, you will be supporting the industry to develop this case. Again, uh, this is the kind of, uh, it's not an uh, investment or it is not an extra burden for the industry. It is a requirement to promote the safety, whether medicine or medical devices or IVD, immediate diagnostics. Uh, Post-marketing surveillance is very, very essential part to ensure the patient safety. So, usually the industry thinks spending or investing money in pharmacovigilance is additional expense or additional expenditure. It is not like that. Pharmacovigilance or material vigilance, it is the primary and the most essential responsibility of the companies to monitor the safety. Because here the risk needs to be identified. Again, you will understand the years to come, maybe your uh, uh, final year or when you study, once you study about the uh, pharmacovigilance and other related subjects, you will understand how the components of post-marketing surveillance and how it is going to help the industry to work. Uh, I think this will be um, uh, helpful to uh, become an entrepreneur or uh, startup. There are two things. Pharmacovigilance and material vigilance. Pharmacovigilance means safety monitoring of medicine. Material vigilance means safety monitoring of medical devices. So according to this slide, now we have India, we have a regulation for both medical device and drugs. The regulation means act. It is there in the act as well. So therefore, some kind of stability is there. This business is, yes, this business is going to grow like anything. If you do not have government commitment or policy level matter things, there will be always uncertainty whether it will come or not. We don't know. But here, we have a regulation for both pharmacovigilance and medical devices because the pharmacovigilance related, drug related, adverse event monitoring or export, import, manufacturing, everything is covered under the Schedule uh, Y as well as Tax and Tax and Act. Similarly, for medical device, material vigilance. So, if you want to become an entrepreneurship or startup, you can start easily because there is a stability, government commitment, and we have provision. Whereas other components, just you leave it because once you enter into the practice, then only you will come to know what you are supposed to do. So, at this point of time, I am leaving the Point number two, sorry again two I have written, it is three, two, three, four and five. Only one is applicable to you. If you want to after BCOM, if you want to become an entrepreneur, what are you supposed to do? Where is the rule or where is the regulation for me? You can refer these things. Rest of the components, rest of the things uh, given in the column will applicable only once you go to your job or go to uh, start your entrepreneurship, then it may be applicable. So as of now, I would like to say that to become an entrepreneur or to start your own company, there is a lot of scope for pharmacovigilance and material vigilance because we have clear uh, rule and regulation. Now, who are your stakeholders? Say, for example, if you are going to work with the industry in pharmacovigilance, material vigilance, or even IVD also have written here, in vitro diagnostics. Or if you want to start your entrepreneurship, who are your stakeholders? So, these are your stakeholders. These are the people or group of organization you are going to work with this. And this, this slide or this information is applicable even if you want to become a, choose a career in regulator or career in industry or career in hospital, then also it will be applicable. Because if you are working in a hospital, suddenly you need to have some basic knowledge or connection with the manufacturer, concerned threats or vaccine manufacturers. And of course, regulators, Public health authorities like regulator, government, so always connected with your activity, with your business. So this is uh, according to our experience, I thought uh, uh, these are the people uh, we really require to work with them. 
And this is actually, I will leave the slide because it's a little bit advantage is for you. Yeah. Now, we as a pharmacist, to become an entrepreneur, entrepreneur or owner of the organization, in these two sectors, I am not talking about others, there may be lots of opportunity for you with other sectors, but here I will talk about only pharmacovigilance and material vigilance. CRO, Contract Research Organization, you can start your own uh, CRO for pharmacovigilance, medical testing or scientific testing. And then second one, Drugs and Medical Devices Testing Laboratory. Actually for medical devices, there are 10,000, more than 10,000 medical devices are approved or regulated in our country. But if you look at the testing labs, only 30 or 40 labs are notified by the regulator. There is lack now. A lot of requirement need to have a testing lab. How we are going to test the medical device? Say for example, thermometer example. Whether the thermometer is properly manufactured or not, how you are going to ensure whether it gives correct reading or not, how you are going to test the thermometer. We have very limited laboratories. Similarly, you take cardiac strength. Right there you need cardiac strength. We have less number of laboratory to test the efficacy, safety as well as quality of cardiac strains. It has to release the medicine. If the cardiac strain, drug eluting strain, it has to release the medicine. And it should have biocompatibility with all our tissues and blood. But we have very limited number of testing laboratory. That is another option, opportunity for the pharmacist to think about medical device testing laboratory. There are so many devices, starting from diagnosis, IDD, treatment, all of the devices are regulated, but we have a very limited testing laboratory. And then uh, herbal red industry, another one, because we have a regulation now for uh, herbal industry. Ayush ministry is coming up in a big way. But we have very limited uh, tests, uh, I mean, uh, resources to ensure the quality and safety of herbal. Again, medical device. Now, artificial intelligence are also artificial intelligence or uh, uh, robotic surgery equipments used in the surgery. All are notified as a medical device. For them also, we require some kind of testing and quality control, right? Now, there will be a small uh, group exercise for all of you. Now, you understood the concept of. Uh, Entrepreneur and uh, getting job in the industry, right? Here, now it is going, you are going to do a group exercise now. I will divide into three groups. Right? Three groups, you will First group, second group. Employee in private sector. How many of you are going to work in a private sector? Please raise your hand. If a group of private sector, they can never thank you. Are they in the group? 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 The concept clear, right? Entrepreneur means you are a job creator. So, Abhi, Hare Group, Aapas, may I discuss karo? If you want, if you are entering into a private sector, what are the benefits for you and what are the risks you are going to face? What are the benefits of private management? Why do you want to go? And what are the risks? Similarly, government job. Why do you want to go to government? And what are the benefits of government? And what are the risks? Risks are 
हर बोर्ड में है हर सेक्टर में रिस्क है थर्ड एंटरप्रिनरशिप आप डिस्कस करो एंटरप्रिनरशिप बनने में क्या क्या आपको बेनिफिट मिलने वाला है आपको क्या चैलेंज है ये मैं नहीं कर सकता हूं एज एन एंटरप्रिनर आई कैन डू दिस आई कैन डू इजिली सिमिलरली प्राइवेट सेक्टर में मुझे ये इजिली कर सकता हूं लेकिन ये जो है मेरे लिए रिस्क है इट विल हेल्प यू एक्चुअली सो आप फाइव टू टेन मिनट्स आप टाइम लीजिए तो एवरी वन विल स्पीक वन वन पॉइंट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्राइवेट सेक्टर कितना लोग है हर इंडिविजुअल को मैं चांस दूंगा ये एक बेनिफिट आई है रिस्क बोलना पड़ेगा तो आप टेन फाइव टू टेन मिनट्स स्टार्ट करो योर टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ
once you complete your delivery, you will come, you will get some idea about it.
Any other benefits in the private sector? High opportunity. Yeah. High opportunity. High opportunities are very good. There are lots of opportunity. Government sector less, yes, but in government private sector opportunities are there. Okay. Or high increment or post or the living growth or something that will add one part. Yeah, in private sector if you perform, if you work well, you will be promoted and you will be paid high, particularly in industry. That is very good uh, thing in uh, you know, private sector. Higher efficiency. Efficiency. Efficiency in the sense. Efficiency other government system can be very nice. So government time for time for data. That is what already innovation. We can apply your innovation skills and everything, right? <coughs> Yes, actually, yes, seniority is not considered like that. Private me, if you have talent, if you have skills, then it is being recognized. Very good. Excellent. Very good, I think you have played a lot. Then, challenge, any challenge, I mean, limitation and uh, risk in the private. Sir, choice of job you have done. Choices are okay for that. Choices are okay for cheap. And what are the challenges? According to me, the most important challenge is that we have to do our own tasks. But if we have to do our own tasks, we have to do our own tasks. 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 अगर आप मैनपावर नहीं है आपको मल्टीटास्किंग करना पड़ेगा मल्टीटास्किंग तो चैलेंजेस है गवर्नमेंट में भी है प्राइवेट में भी है क्या फाइनेंशियलिटी सिर्फ की नहीं है ठीक है करेक्ट जॉब सिक्योरिटी फाइनेंशियल सिक्योरिटी ठीक है सिक्योरिटी और सस्ती सर नो प्रॉब्लम सो आई थिंक अभी गवर्नमेंट प्राइवेट से हमने कंपेयर कर लिया यही बात। But accordingly, if you are determined the growth, those who are interested to enter into public sector, accordingly you have to develop your skills. Private also, skills are very much required for both. So today such a competitive world around uh, you know how many pharmacy colleges, three thousand, four thousand pharmacy colleges are there in our country. You can see how many students are coming out. So definitely you have to develop your skills, whether you are determined to go for a, choose a private sector or government sector. Skills are very much required. Other than the skills, soft skills, communication skills, leadership quality, dedication, commitment, these are you have to develop. Because it is not a competition. The output is there, 4,000, 5,000 pharmacy colleges are there in our country. Our country may 100 minimum pass out be they go away, so it's not competition only. So my advice, you develop your skills, your core competency in your subject, both those who are interested for government sector or private sector. This is one of the need, right. Now let us move on to the entrepreneurship. Okay, you know, benefits of entrepreneurship. Yes, boss. First of all, you know, the benefits of so first of all, entrepreneurship में multiple skill development increase होता है क्योंकि job में आप एक department तक रुक जाते हो और entrepreneurship में आपको हर department का ज्ञान होना चाहिए वैसे marketing हो या financial हो या फिर task printing हो ठीक है इनका आ आ being an entrepreneur you need to have multi tasking skills like administrative skills marketing skills financial Everything you should have, technical, then only you can manage. This is clear to you. Because what happens in entrepreneurship? You are going to give a job to 10 people or 15 people. And you have to monitor their performance. This is administrative skill, leadership. Who comes to the job, you have to keep it. If you don't have any skills in the marketing, if you put it in the marketing, then you will have a business. And 
ये भी एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप में अच्छा बताया आपने एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप का और एक स्किल्स है लीडरशिप मतलब आपको गवर्नमेंट को डील करना होगा रेगुलेटर को डील करना होगा ये सारे होना चाहिए फिर फिनेंशियल जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल आपका टर्न आउट टर्न क्या बोलते हैं बिजनेस में उसको टर्न आउट ना टर्न ओवर टर्न ओवर कितना है और उसमें कैसे आप यूटिलाइज करें वो क्या है ये सारे प्लानिंग में देन एनी अदर रिस्क सॉरी एनी अदर एडवांटेज माइक Sir, in entrepreneur, you can be your own boss. Boss, very good. That is what you can be always a boss. Sir, in private sector, you have to listen to your seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, in government sector, you also have to listen to your seniors. Mm -hmm. But in entrepreneur, you will be your own very boss. Good, very good. In entrepreneur, you are always the boss. You don't require to listen your boss. You can dictate. That is what the leadership or yes, other skills you require. Right then. चैलेंजेस बहुत होते हैं ऐसे डिसीजन मेकिंग काफी बड़ी होती है उसके अंदर अगर आपने गलत डिसीजन लिया तो आपको ना सारा दिन मार देगा एक्जेक्टली डिसीजन मेकिंग इस वेरी वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट ये मैं बोल रहा हूँ अगर इतना इन्वेस्ट कर दिया आपने इतने करने के बाद आपने सही डिसीजन नहीं लिया दें whether I can work consistently, sometimes ups and downs in the entrepreneurship. कभी profit भी मिलाएगा, कभी loss भी होगा. Whether आप उसको balance करके जाओगे कि नहीं. ये नहीं है entrepreneurship में हमेशा peak में नहीं है, down भी हो सकता है. So ये सारे skills आप आपको देखो, whether you are to do so, then you can do it. Easy नहीं तो उसको perfect होना चाहिए बस. Any other risk? ये तो मैंने बोला है ना मल्टीटास्किंग इसको मार्केटिंग इसको मार्केटिंग में रखना है इसको एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में रखना है इस इस कितना ले सकते हो the amount of money you are investing through your business you should know your stop loss कि इतने इस पे हमें रुकना ही रुकना है इससे ज़्यादा रिस्क हम नहीं उठा सकते हमें that's the knowledge of finance अगर ये knowledge तुम्हारे पास नहीं है तो entrepreneurship में तुम्हारा business तो भी � very good. So, here we have two groups. Are you agree with this thing? Sorry, anything. Okay. So, this is what happens. We have to live our life. We have to money for livelihood. So, either you have to choose the government or you have to go to the private or you have to go to the entrepreneurship. That is what the group is. So, nowadays, you know, during our study, there was no such concept. Simply, we used to read the books. We used to appear the exam, we get it done. But today the scenario is changing. The concept of making in India, entrepreneurship, all such things are coming. I am sure once you complete uh, your degree, definitely you will have some kind of clarity and definitely you will select you want to become an entrepreneur or you want to become a uh, private sector or government sector accordingly. You can select, I mean, you can, uh, your skills will be developed. So that is how this exercise. So, Next to conclude, so whatever we discussed, according to my experience, I think you have, you have shared very uh, you know practical and uh, uh, logical conclusion. I must appreciate all of you. Uh, at least you have some thought. Really, those ideas, uh, those observations are really good. And uh, this is whatever we discussed. Some of them are already here. So, just to compare private sector, public sector and entrepreneur. Always private sector works for the profit, to make profit. No entrepreneurship or no organization will work for the service. Free me to koi nahi karta koi entrepreneurship. Unko to money profit, profit generate karta hai. Right? For public sector, कोई भी पब्लिक सेक्टर मेनली फोकस ना सर्विस मनी मेकिंग प्रॉफिट मेकिंग इज नॉट अ प्रिंसिपल आर विजन ऑफ अ गवर्नमेंट 
government is uh, to provide the service. You take regulator, you take hospital, they are mainly service providers. And then entrepreneur, you have a choice. He wanted to sometimes even you can put, there are so many NGOs are working, they are mainly committed for service oriented. So it is up to you whether you want to make profit or you want to uh, give a service also or both. Generally, uh, private sector, they will set for a challenge, they will give a target to you. You have to face the challenge and you have to succeed in private sector. But in government sector, if you want to succeed, you have to create your own challenge and succeed. You have to convince your boss, you have to convince the ministry, you have to convince the minister for some new proposal, then you succeed. You have to create a challenge. So in entrepreneurship, again, there are lot of competition, global challenges, you have to create your challenges. So the advantage, major advantage, in case of private sector, there is no capital investment. You don't require to invest any money. You can be a joining as a okay, employee in private sector. You don't require, you don't uh, worry about the tension of financial uh, commitment or capital investment. Similarly, in government also there is no capital investment. But in entrepreneur, you are investing money. So that is the risk and that is the challenge always. You have to prepare for that. So generally in private sector, applying your uh, uh, own idea because the goal, they have their own agenda, you have to work for that. They have their own SOP, limited. Even government sector also applying your own idea, limited. But here unlimited in case of entrepreneurship. And the major, uh, major thing you have both in the government sector or private sector, successor is not by your choice. Successor means who is going to run the organization. But in entrepreneurship, you have developed your organization, you have started your company, you can choose who is going to be your successor. So for example, in IPC, as long as we are there, we can work, but we can we, we are going to retire, but we cannot select our successor who is the successor of IPC. Similarly, private sector the same scenario. But in the entrepreneur, always you have a choice. You can identify your own uh, person for the successor of your organization. So this is some of the, the thought. Other than that, you all already explained very well. I mean, uh, I am sure this exercise will help you. Maybe to not today, but in future, uh, at least some level it is going to help you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I wish you all the best.